Hello, my name is Ben from Axminster Tools. We are doing another workshop Wednesday. We've got a little project here I want to show you, something a little bit different this week. We are going to do a 3D scroll saw project. So this is just an example, this is one we've made up. A little tulip and I just wanted to show you this so you get the idea. We're going to cut this on two different faces and when we remove the waste we end up with a a little 3D project in the middle, okay? We're not gonna do a tulip today. We are gonna do something a little bit more seasonal, a little reindeer, okay? So that's all ready to go. I've got my piece of timber here, and this is nothing special. This is just a, a piece of scrappy old pine. Um, you can see it's got a nail hole in it there. This is just a bit of waste that we've picked up. I've, I've cut it down to size. One thing we need to consider is our 50 mil depth of cut. Okay, that's the, the, the maximum on this machine. Um, so we need to consider that when we're sizing up our bit of timber and when we're, we're printing off our templates. Okay, so our little template here, our reindeer, I'm just gonna quickly cut that out and glue it on. I'm propping it quite close to the feet because this wants to stand up at the end of the project. And I want to get our feet of our reindeer aligned to the bottom here. Okay, that's great. We've got Craig behind the camera today. He's coming in nice and close to see what we're doing. So on these, we have two different faces. The, the tulip one is, is the same on both face, but with our reindeer, we've got two different profiles. Okay, there's this little dotted line here and I'm just going to line that with the corner of the project and make that little fold on there. And just make sure we're, we've got plenty of room that side and that side before we get going because you can always resize this to suit your piece of timber. And this is um, downloadable or printable off of our website. So a bit of this Copydex silicon glue. And that goes on the paper rather than the project. So we're, we're putting it on the paper and not the piece of timber. Just makes uh, removing it a little bit easier at the end. So let's make sure we've got a good coverage on that. So when we're scrolling this, we're not gonna lift up the corners and create those little flaps that can be a little bit irritating. So let's get that aligned to the corner I'm dodging my little nail hole there. But I've kept this quite long. Just sewing a bit, a bit more material to keep hold of when we're pushing this through the saw. So we'll just smooth that down. And there we go, that's our project blank ready to cut. A couple of little things I've just checked. Important that the blade is, is square this way, so forwards and backwards on, on these cuts. When we're doing a deep cut right down through here, if that blade's at a slight angle, it may mean that the cut, when we turn this over, is not gonna meet up at the bottom. So it might, you might find you have to go back in and, and cut things um, a second time. So make sure we're nice and straight here. Um, just adjust it on the back of the machine on, on, this, um, on this scroll saw. And we've come up a step this week. We're on the, the this trade scroll saw. Um, a couple of nice little features on this. We've not got that insert plate here anymore. Um, it's just a, an exposed blade clamp underneath. Um, can make things like blade change a little bit quicker. We've got that front and forwards and backwards adjustment we can make on this machine. So a really nice, um, really nice bit of kit, this one. Okay, so. I'm going to start cutting this line first and then we're going to wrap some tape around this, turn it over and then we'll cut our second bit of pattern. Good stuff. Okay, so I'm just putting my goggles on, machine on and just listen to that, it's just purring away, a nice quiet machine this. And I'm going to come in here and just follow this line right the way around. 
There's only really two cuts to make on this. This long one around the outside of the body here and the antlers, and then just this one in between the legs there. So let's start around on our leg here. Nice slow feed, this is quite a deep cut. And there'll be parts of this blade that will never leave the project. Okay, so the, the blade on a, on a scroll saw has got a, a certain amount of up and down travel. And because of the, the depth of this piece of timber, there are parts of this blade that are never going to, um, to leave the project. Let's just get my little blower in position. just following that line. So with the with the blade perhaps not going all the way out we've got a well my, my go-to blade this is a number five modified geometry blade um, and it has that um, that kind of open tooth pattern so we, we've got less teeth on a blade like this which is what you want um, it helps to clear all that waste. So all that kind of wood dust that's in the middle of the cut is to stop that from jamming in between the in between the teeth and, and also give it a little bit of room in there for the for the waste to sit in if we if we need it to. I'm cutting just outside the line on this project. just to give us a little bit more uh, material once it's finished. Just making it a bit stronger really. So just notice how the project, how far that twists around. Holding it down onto the table. And this extra bit of material on the top here is just giving me a bit more stability, a lot more to, to kind of hold on to. And you see how fast the, the project just turns then. You know, this is what scroll, scroll saw is all about. It's that fast change of direction. It's that really thin blade that's given us the option to be able to spin this project around almost on a pin. There's not many tools that will do that. Perhaps a coping saw or something like that. Again, I'm just going just outside the line for, for, the, uh, for the neck and the legs. So I'm just going to shift my grip here, make myself comfortable, don't, don't fight any of this, just make sure you're holding it comfortably, that gentle pressure down onto the table. I'm just going to move my thumb there because that's where the blade's just about to exit and switch it to the other side. Okay. And I just slow down at the end of the cut there. Allow the blade to cut its way out. Don't force it back. So we've got this little section here now. So quite a deep cut. It's given a little bit more resistance then something flatter and thinner. Like I say, this is a piece of pine. So it can, can be a little bit 
resinous. You may find if you got a blade with more teeth that some of this um, this uh, wood dust and the um, and the resin kind of can sometimes build up on the on the blade here in between the teeth. So that's that face cut. I'm going to now wrap some um, masking tape around this one just to hold those pieces together while we make our second cut. I'm going to cut it on this face so I want our join for our tape to be around the back there somewhere. Again we don't want this kind of flapping around or, or lifting while we're trying to work. So once the first piece is on that kind of holds the bits together and then we can just quickly whiz around couple more bits. You don't have to completely cover it, this is really just to, to hold the project together. Let's go with one more around the antlers here and I can see the project through this masking tape, it's quite a thin one. Okay, so just test it on the table, make sure none of this is going to pick up or make the project rock at all, uh, but that's nice and flat, nice and stable on the table. Okay, so again we've got just two cuts to make, one of them's very long cut, the other is just this one, um, the little detail in between the legs there. And again, on these legs I'm just going to cut just outside of that line, on the, on the waist side of that line. Just going to readjust my hold down clamp and my blower because we've turned this on its side now, everything's dropped down a bit um, we want to bring this down nice and close to our project in case it catches and wants to lift. Just around the back of the tail here. saying before, don't worry if you do drift off this line, it's not the end of your project, it's not going to um, uh, make a huge difference to your project. What can affect it is if you do drift off and then very quickly change the direction of the cut to get back onto the line, that will give you almost like a, a jagged edge. So if we do drift off we're just going to gently come back onto that line, we won't panic, it's just going to change the shape ever so slightly. So just see how fast this project turns around on the table using that blade as our pivot point. So that noise there, that 
kind of whack on the table is where I just release my downwards pressure and that allows the project just to lift up okay and then it gets pushed back onto the table makes that noise and that's what this hold down clamp's for keeps the project down if it does lift up also acts as a guard so we don't get our fingers too close to our, our blade That is cutting really nice. projects for this time of year you know, they, they're quite quick and easy nothing too taxing about it and they make really nice little kind of table dressings or uh, little displays Just coming out of the cut nice and slow, allow the blade to cut its way out. Okay, we're not putting too much forward pressure on. Okay, so one last little cut here. Let's get that heat shape in, so a quick, almost like a little chicane there. things start to get a little bit loose we've got lots of little layers that we've cut in between here so you know if you want to stop and apply a bit more masking tape you can I'm just gonna keep my thumb right here Again, nice and slow on the exit. And there we are. Our little reindeer, we've cut it on both faces. Now all we've got to do is to just slide this out. Okay, you can start to see all the pieces. I mean, that's even quite cool by itself. We'll put that to one side, we might save that for something else. Now this kind of works a bit like one of those um, puzzle boxes, you need to slide the pieces out. Okay, don't be tempted to pull them out top to bottom. They should just slide out nice and gentle. We'll get rid of all these pieces. And then right in the middle there, we've got our little, little reindeer. Okay, you might want to soften that up. You might want to sand these hard edges back if you want. I quite like them like that, that kind of square look to them. But that's our little 3D reindeer. A nice little easy project. Oh, sorry, I've left this bit in the middle there. We'll slide that out. It can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but look at that. The shape on those antlers. Really interesting. There's loads of different patterns you can get. Um, on these these 3D cuts, um, and you know why not try making them some different sizes? So we can have a you know just bring the scale down on the photocopier, make a little a little group of reindeer, and I've even pinched a couple of Colwins turned Christmas trees. Quite quickly, you can make yourself a little Christmassy scene, and that's a uh, 3D scroll sawing. Okay, well thanks very much, a lovely little project that one, I really enjoy doing these, um, these 3D ones. Um, come see us again next Wednesday for another Workshop Wednesday. 
See you soon. Thanks again.